Hey guys, welcome back. Well, today it's even more mistakes. And these are some of the secret ones that you don't even know about. First up on my even more mistakes video today is using heavy dark furnishings when you're dealing with small spaces. For example, take a look at this. I mean, there's a lot going on in this room and there's way too much furniture and it's overscaled for the space. Or this cottage space, which, you know, cottages are inherently smaller, but you don't need to throw in two huge sofas that are super dark. So if you have a small space and you want to kind of make it feel a little bit more generous in scale, you want to make sure that you're dealing with lighter woods, lighter finishes, smaller scale pieces. Perfect example. Look at how the lightness and the relatively soft color palette actually makes the eye move around the space, making it feel even larger. Now, if you took those rules and we went back to this cottage room and for instance, you painted the wood on the ceiling all white, that would make that ceiling pop up. And then you did those sofas in something lighter scale. Oh my gosh, the room would feel like twice as large. So the number one mistake for a small space is jamming too much overscaled dark heavy furniture into it. Next mistake I see a lot is putting beds in front of windows. If you have a situation like that and that is the absolute only place that your bed will fit, then let me show you some rules on how we can make that work better for you. First up, you want to try and keep your headboard as low as possible. You can see in this picture here, they've got one of those really high headboards and it's blocking three quarters of the window. That's not a really successful solution. You want to kind of keep it low like this one. I like that one or even kind of open through with light like you know this metal one or even this one that's got kind of a cane back so it lets a little bit light through but you know it's still kind of a surface that you can rest your pillows against the second thing that you really want to make sure that you're addressing is the view of the bed and the window treatments together as a whole because you don't just look at the bed you look at the entire wall elevation and so you want to address those window treatments really carefully try making the whole thing a composition there's one really successful solution which is of course to drape the entire wall this worked really well in this space it's beautiful and you never really know that the window's there unless the drapery are already stacked and open but it looks like it's intentional and it looks very nice another way if you don't want to drape an entire wall is to make sure that your drapery rod is long enough so that the end panels hang straight not touching the headboard and then you know you get some nightstands or something that are right in front of it and you begin to make a nice little composition out of it and i love the solution of these top down bottom up you can do them in roman shades or you can do them in blinds but it's great because you can move those up and down as you need for a privacy so there's really good solutions for this if you have that situation which is the bed up against the window the next big mistake i see is people not measuring their space before they buy something. Oh my gosh. Things out of scale are one of the first tip offs professionals see when they walk into a space and go, oops, nobody was paying attention with this. You know, you can see what's going on. I mean, this white love seat is jammed in that room so tight that that door can't even move or that green sectional. Oh my gosh. I think that must have come from another space because it's slammed in there. Neither of those are good solutions. Here's the reality. You always need to have a plan. There's not a professional out there that will touch a project without a plan in scale that has furniture laid out on it and they know exactly where the traffic flow is happening, how big those pieces are. Your plan is your absolute roadmap and you can't live without it. Now, there's all kinds of ways you can get a plan. You can draw one up. I often just sketch one out in space, but I also live with graph paper and a scale. If you saw my video on design tools, I listed a couple of apps that are great for consumer use and they're easy to use. And then you know exactly what to do. Saves you all kinds of time, and money and serious 
headaches. Bingo, super easy. Okay, so another common mistake I see, and it's sort of related to a couple of the others, is when I walk into a room and all the furniture has been slammed up against the walls like it's afraid of each other. I mean, my gosh, look at this room. You need a megaphone to talk to grandma in the other sofa in this room. I don't know what's going on there. The problem there is I think people are afraid to use the center of the room and to use space. And what you really want to do is, again, we're going to go back to the idea of having a plan, but you want to float some of your pieces in space in an intentional way to create a conversation area, maybe a dining area, those kinds of things. And you're going to use the space. Like for instance, this picture of this, I don't know, maybe it's a loft area, but they've got, you know, the dining area sectioned off in the upper left. And then they've got a sofa with some nice chairs around it facing an opposite wall, which might have a focal point of some kind on it. This is all really nice use of the space. There's nothing on the side walls. So don't be afraid to use the space to place furnishings in, in intentional groups. So the next mistake is rugs that are too small for the spaces. Oh, ay, ay, ay. So here's how you need to think about area rugs. They are meant to anchor seating groups or furnishings collections together. So something like this, not so successful because it just makes your eye look down at that little tiny rug. Not a good look. Here's the deal. If you're going to do an area rug for say a generous room, like your living room, you have got to start at minimum with like an eight by 10, nine by 12, even maybe a 10 by 15. It just depends. You need big, big rugs. So any of these other little ones, eh, throw them in a bathroom, throw them in a bedroom. I don't care, but you need a big one. If you're going to be putting it into a large living area that has multiple seating pieces to it. And for you guys that have kind of oddly shaped spaces, or maybe you need something that's square as opposed to rectangular. If you go to my video on rugs, I give you a super pro tip at the end about how to get a great custom sized and shaped rug just for your space for a bargain. It's super budget solution and they look great. This next mistake is almost as ubiquitous as the rugs and it is hanging art too high. Now we just talked about four or five mistakes. Pop quiz. This room represents all of them. Clearly the art is too high. The furniture is overscaled. It's jammed up against the wall. It's in front of the window and there's no visible light source in the room. So there's a lot going on in here wrong, but let's focus on the art for a moment. So guys, there's an easy rule of thumb to remember. Most artwork should hang at center line somewhere between 60 to 65 inches above the floor. Now, I personally tend to hang them a little bit lower, but that's kind of your general area that will accommodate most artwork in most situations. But you know, that's not the only way you can hang artwork. There's lots of different options. Perhaps you're doing a gallery wall like this space, then you're going to have artwork that's definitely going to come down lower than that. Or perhaps it's a very tall piece. So there's some accommodation that needs to be made, but you want to think about the artwork as connecting to part of the overall furnishings that it's sitting above. For instance, I love leaning a piece on a piece of furniture. This is fantastic. That's a great look too. And it integrates the artwork into the overall elevation and the space. So remember rule of thumb, eye level, which is about 60 to 65 inches above the floor. Oh, a pro tip. If you want to get some interesting imagery at kind of a budget option, find a great large scale coffee table book that has some beautiful imagery in it. Slice it out, 
get those images matted by somebody like Level Frame or Fast Frame or someplace that does framing inexpensively. And oh my gosh, you've got a whole option. You can do a black and white statement. You can do a whole series of color images. It's endless, the options, and it's a super bargain. Now, be sure and like, subscribe, hit these videos. 